Biggest battery company in the world, CATL. They are also Tesla's largest battery supplier. It appears that this new battery pack will be used in the Tesla Model Y in the first quarter of 2024. This is incredibly exciting news. This is probably the most exciting battery news of the last decade. Not only is it exciting, but it's extremely scary. It's very worrying if you're the competition. I would go so far as to say this is game over. Now, hopefully in the future, people come back and they look at this video and say, you're right, it was game over. Now, whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, I'd say it's probably more of a bad thing because this means that one company will continue to dominate the EV battery market, not only the EV battery market, but energy storage as well. But is this a good thing? I mean, this company already owns 40% of the global market. It's already verging on monopolizing the battery market. And now it has revealed this technology. I've said on this channel a few times that this would happen. And I'm, I'm sure if you've been subscribed and you watch a lot of my videos, you would have heard me repeat this. You think, shut up, Viking, stop saying it. I said this would happen with LFP batteries. My friends, it's game over. This is it. If you're one of these companies, if you're Honda who just decided that they want to have a joint venture battery factory um, that LG Chem are going to build for them, a number of different companies have decided that in the US, well, yeah, this is what you have to compete against and you have no chance. I mean, maybe you can make some batteries in a limited number for customers in the US, but this is your competition and you cannot possibly compete with this. Not only the scale, the affordability, and the sheer ability in terms of lifespan, cold weather performance, improved energy density, ability to charge to 100%, charging speed. Well, yeah. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans, and you're watching The Electric Viking. CATL, the world's biggest battery company. You know what happened? Neo. Neo just loved to spend money. They're kind of like crack cocaine addicts. They just throw money everywhere and they're constantly borrowing more money. People don't talk about this. They think that I'm making this up. It's not true. Do your research. You'll find out what I'm saying is true. In fact, even Chinese analysts say the same thing as what I say. I'm, I'm just basically kind of going off a lot of what they say, but the reality here is they do. So Neo are always looking for the newest, latest, shiniest object. That's the way the company is. That's why they've got so many models. Um, and it's why they went to CATL. And they said, CATL, we want you to build us solid state batteries for our new car. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be brilliant. CATL never turn people away. They never turn away new customers. Part of it is for marketing. Part of it is because they want to dominate. They want to get rid of the competition. And guess what they said to Neo? No, thank you. Bye-bye. You can, you can waste your time. You can waste your money developing that product. But we will do the logical thing. We will make better versions of our existing products and we will continue to improve them. That, my friends, is exactly what they are doing. They now have two different versions of lithium-ion phosphate batteries, which are both, honestly, unbelievably amazing. The thing is, think about how far they've come. And I'm just going to explain in a minute just how good these batteries are and why they're game-changing, why it's game over. And it is. Mathematically, I'm telling you right now, mathematically, I've done the sums. I've got a spreadsheet. I've done the sums. It's not mathematically possible to compete. It just isn't. I don't know how you possibly could. Now, yes, if you're talking about Ferrari level cars, if you're talking about people who want to buy 100,000 US dollar plus cars, yeah, sure, you can make solid state batteries, you can do magical things, magical things with magical non-existent technology right now. But anyway, I'm sure at some point in the future, it'll become a real thing, even though Neo's solid state battery never actually really paid off. What did Neo do? Neo went to a company called We Lion. And we alone said, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, of course. We want to work with Neo. We want the brand cachet to be able to tell our other, our other customers or potential customers, look, we're working with Neo. So they worked on a solid state battery. There was a lot of hoopla about this new battery. Everyone said it would be amazing. Finally, Neo bring it out after so much anticipation. Comes in there a new EV. Neo said, look, we have a thousand kilometers of range, just over a thousand kilometers, 600 miles. 
that's on the very optimistic CLTC scale. But anyway, real world range obviously is going to be a lot less, but it doesn't matter. And then we see the battery size, which is astronomically large. The only reason this so-called solid state battery, which is not even solid state battery, it's semi-solid state, had that range is because it simply has an enormous number of batteries. You can get that range with CATL's non-solid state battery, which actually has a higher energy density than the solid state battery or the semi-solid state battery that we alone made for NEO. So in the end, NEO's concept failed because they could have just said to CATL, what have you got? CATL would have said, well, we have the new Chirin battery. It'll have a higher energy density battery than the battery you're going to make wasting hundreds of millions of dollars with We Lion. However, now the reality is the average person wants an affordable electric car. The average person doesn't want to spend a lot of money. And that, my friends, is exactly why this battery technology from CATL changes the game. They have two batteries now, the M3P battery. That's like a lithium ion phosphate battery, but it does have manganese. Apparently it has zinc as well. It's sort of like a crossover between a lithium ion phosphate battery and a lithium ternary battery. Now it's believed those batteries are in the new Tesla Model 3, which is about to come out. However, mass production will begin at the start of next year for a revolutionary new lithium ion phosphate battery from CATL, which will charge as fast as the battery packs in Hyundai's Ionic 5, Porsche's Taycan, Kia EB6, 350 kilowatt fast charging in an LFP battery. Now that is unheard of. This is the first time that an LFP battery has been able to do that. But even more importantly, there is one problem with LFP batteries. If you live in a very cold place where the temperatures regularly hit zero degrees Celsius, then LFP batteries aren't quite as good. Now here's what Elon Musk said the big problem with LFP batteries is. LFP batteries charge more slowly in cold weather than NCA batteries, and that range decreases somewhat more than NCA batteries in cold weather. Keep in mind, he said, that both NCA and LFP do worse in cold weather. They both do. It's just that LFP batteries get more of a cold weather effect than NCA batteries. When you're on a road trip and navigating to a supercharger, your car will pre-warm its batteries. Well, your Tesla car will anyway. That will alleviate the slower charging problem to some extent, but you'll be at the supercharger six or seven minutes longer in winter with LFP. That is a problem if you plan to use your car in such a way as to need to do lots of cold weather supercharging. It won't matter though if you're just going to charge your car overnight in your garage. Well, it turns out now with this new battery that has changed. Now lithium ion phosphate batteries, we know, most people know all the advantages over NCA batteries that Elon Musk was talking about. Some of those include, they last about twice as long. You can charge them to 100% without getting battery degradation. Um, meaning your theoretical, your real world range is more in many cases than a battery which claims to have a longer range because often that battery, which is NCA chemistry, well, the manufacturers will tell you don't charge it above 80%. So you don't, therefore that reduces your real world range. There's other benefits to LFP batteries, such as they're safer, they're much less likely to burn themselves, they're much less likely to have issues if they're in a crash, etc. So now the world's biggest EV manufacturer, CATL, has announced the 4C LFP battery. They said it's driven by innovations in materials, structure, and system, rather than some pie-in-the-sky chemistry breakthrough. This is what I've been saying ad infinitum for a long time. All we need to do, we don't need magical battery packs. All we need to do is continue to improve and innovate the existing technology, which is already amazing. That's exactly what the world's biggest battery company are doing. And that's why it's scary because these guys have their heads screwed on right. The battery and the type of iron phosphate chemistry that CATL supplies to Tesla for its base Model 3 and Model Y vehicles can add 400 kilometers or 250 miles of range in 10 minutes, taking the battery pack from 20% to an 80% charge on a fast charger, 10 minutes. Now, obviously your architecture of your EV would need to be able to support this fast charging. It's not guaranteed that every car using this battery can just charge that quickly, but it has the potential to charge at that speed without it being a problem. Meaning, well, 
It's now capable of charging at a similar speed, if not faster than lithium ternary or NCA battery packs. Now keep in mind, one of the things I haven't mentioned yet is the price. Lithium ion phosphate batteries, especially those made by CATL, are currently the cheapest battery you can buy in the world. Now, are they the cheapest battery period? Now you can buy rubbish from companies you've never heard of, but mass manufacturing, cheapest quality battery product you can buy. And that's why Tesla use them in their standard range vehicles, which are the most popular EVs that Tesla sell, highest selling vehicles they have in the world. Now, in addition, these batteries can perform well in cold weather. They've overcome that challenge. So cold weather is no longer a problem for them. However, on top of all these advantages, these new LFP cells also have approximately 10% higher energy density than the previous battery packs. Now, Tesla already gets nearly 450 kilometers of range, so around about 280 miles of range in the real world in many tests from a 60 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery pack. Adding 10% energy density to that pack could give you, say, possibly an extra 50 kilometers of range, meaning the standard range vehicles could have 500 kilometers of range. That, my friends, in addition to super fast charging and almost no issues charging in cold weather would make this product game changing. But then there's, like I said, the price. Considering these batteries are already cheap in the competition, how exactly do you compete with this? CATL say these new LFP cells can give an EV 700 kilometers of range. That's 438 miles. Now, of course, we have no idea what size battery pack they're referring to. That could mean nothing. It could mean something. But the point is here, a 10% improvement in energy density is actually very significant. How are they getting this improved energy density? Well, we don't know the exact details, but we do know this. There is a new graphite anode, a new electrolyte formulation, a thinner, safer separator, and better ion transport. The battery has reduced heat generation and is equipped with a new advanced battery management system, which obviously can control the heat even better. That said though, LFP batteries are already well known for being able to control heat really well. So if you live in a hot climate, you absolutely want an LFP battery. It's gonna last you a lot longer if you live in a hot climate. That's what many users of Tesla vehicles, other vehicles will tell you as well. CATL said this, we hope that thanks to improved technology and reduced cost, Shenzhen will become a standard product available for every electric vehicle. Now getting back to that cold weather ability, LFP batteries, like I said, don't really like the winter. Even Elon Musk himself said that, despite the fact that Tesla sells a lot of vehicles with those batteries. However, CATL say they've fixed this issue completely. They say that now the batteries can be charged to 80% in 30 minutes, so it's slower charging, but still at good speed, even at minus 10 degrees Celsius. That would be an, a massive improvement on the current LFP batteries currently available now. Now here's what's really scary about this company. I've mentioned the two different types of batteries that CATL have. They have the M3P battery with a higher energy density than this battery. It also has a higher energy density than the previous version, this is like the cold weather LFP battery pack. Both of these batteries are apparently said to be the same price as existing LFP batteries to companies to buy. There's no increase in prices. But in addition to that, CATL also have three other batteries that are either available right now or coming really soon. This is what really does make this company extremely scary. Mass production is happening either now or soon of CATL's Cheerin battery. In June 2022, CATL unveiled its Cheerin battery. The first customer was Geely. And the Cheerin battery pack gave the Zika 001 SUV a range of 1,000 kilometers, meaning a bigger car, the Neo's EV equipped with a semi-solid state battery can get the same range as the Neo EV with a smaller battery pack. Now this battery is an NMC ternary battery, kind of like the battery cells that Tesla use in the Model S and the Model X. The same chemistry as what you see in a 4680. However, the energy density is 255 watts per kilo and the volume utilization is higher than what we see in 4680 structural battery packs 
at 72%. Then they have the condensed battery. This is a bit of a scary one because it's said to have 500 watts per kilo in energy density. In April, CHL unveiled their condensed battery with an incredible 500 watts per kilo in energy density. Now these high energy density cells would not be used likely for EVs, maybe for supercars, but they're more intended for things like aeroplanes, things that need to fly where the weight really matters. 500 watts per kilo in energy density makes commercial airliners completely feasible. Not only feasible, it makes them, well, realistic, and it means they'll be coming within only a few years. In addition, CATL have sodium iron batteries. They've been working on these for years and they're now selling them for energy storage and for cheap EVs. These sodium batteries are even cheaper than LFP batteries, but on an energy density to price scale, they're not cheaper. The LFP batteries are still cheaper based on the energy density they have. However, within a few years time, sodium batteries will become cheaper than LFP. In April, Car News China says that it was revealed that CHL is working on their sodium ion batteries. In fact, they've been working on them for years. They said they'd be cheaper eventually by 30% versus LFP. The first production version of sodium ion packs will be installed in mass-produced EVs in the fourth quarter of 2024. The first customer to use CHL's sodium ion batteries will be Cherry's new iCar. So sodium ion batteries, they are, well, they're they're good and bad. Now, they have a lower energy density than LFP, but they don't need lithium. Sodium is very abundant and very cheap. And the other advantage that they have is they perform extremely well in cold weather. It's believed that car makers such as CHL are also working on an additional battery, which is the sodium ion LFP hybrid battery pack, which will combine the best of both worlds, both of those technologies. My friends, here is the thing. These batteries are much, much cheaper than the batteries that any other battery company outside of China is producing. This is the biggest battery company in the world. They can undercut anyone. It doesn't matter whether they're outside of China or inside of China. The thing is as well, their LFP batteries are known now for their quality, longevity, and their safety. Now these batteries have just gotten significantly better. The way I see this, there is no possible way to win if you are the competition. Sure, you could say, well, we'll undercut them. We'll un you, know, you could offer these great deals and say, we'll undercut CATL by 10%. But the thing is, how long can you do that for and win? It's only a matter of time before you simply go bankrupt. That, my friends, is probably what will happen to the majority of battery companies competing with CATL. Even the Chinese government agrees with what I'm saying. Even they believe that CATL is possibly becoming a problem, possibly monopolizing the global battery industry. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.